Okay. Well, I think we're on um, we're on time um, at eight o'clock, and we do want to be quite timely with this. So I think maybe we must get started, and we ask. I don't know if is Pastor Cal still. Um, Pastor Cal, yeah. are you there? Yeah, well, maybe you yes, can start us yeah. off and have a word of prayer. Okay. Um, we'll pray now. Just want to see. Yeah. Um, okay, if I can ask so maybe just, the brothers I'm to add in some some people, yeah. Okay, while while Carl's doing that, if I can ask you brothers to just stick your mobile devices onto silent or flight mode or whatever it is, so that we don't get too many interruptions in this. I know that we're going to be putting things on um, silent and video and that type of stuff off, but just want to encourage you to pay attention and to not allow yourself to get too distracted so that you can follow follow on nicely as we go. But if you can stick things on and we, we're hoping to be timely and be done by about nine o'clock. And we know that all of you have probably been at church multiple times today and been part of the worship of the Lord. And so you'll all be also needing a bit of rest. So thank you for giving of this time as well for this time. Uh, sure, okay. All right, let me pray for you guys. Let's pray for our class. Father, thank you for this time that we can draw aside and uh, come and learn uh, together to be better preachers of your word. I pray that you would use this class, Lord, to mold us and to shape us more into the image of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your precious word, a gift that you have left us. And I pray that as we delve into your word, and we look at your word and understand uh, how you've put it together and how we can take that and preach a message of hope and encouragement, the gospel uh, to people in our con various congregations. Lord, I pray that you would take our efforts and that you would bless them and multiply them, Lord, and that even through our efforts of preaching better, Lord, that we may see more and more souls come to be saved. So we thank you for this time we can draw aside, be with Rocky as he teaches us, Lord. We thank you for him and for the work that he's done. And I pray that we would prove to be faithful students, Lord, and that we would stay the course and uh, Lord, learn and grow in our fellowship together, um, not only with each other, Lord, but also with you. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. All right, welcome everybody. Cal. Can I ask you all to just put your cameras on for a second <clears throat> so everybody can sort of meet everybody and just say hi. And um, yeah, and then we can see who's who in the zoo here. And uh, I think it'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Hello. Right. Hello, hello. Some familiar hi. faces. Yeah. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Um, Hello, brothers. Uh, I'm struggling to find where to put the camera on. You got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it there, Kirk. Oh, you, yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Wow, we've got a fantastic class here from all over the country. Anybody outside of this country? It's me. I'm from Botswana. Botswana. Yeah, hey, good. welcome, brother. Yeah. Good welcome. to have you here with us. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. anybody else? Sorry. Is Durban considered outside the country? Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to ask you now to put your cameras off <clears throat> and mute yourself. And if you have a question, then please use the chat uh, to raise your question. Or if you want to stop Rocky, just put your put, use one of the reactions and put your hand up um just to just to ask a question and when he sees it and when he gets a chance um then we can 
we can answer that question. All right. So thank you, guys. Welcome to our class. And without further ado, I hand over to you, Rocky. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Cal. So, um, brothers, I hope that you do have a notepad and a pen with you. And if you have a notepad and pen and you've got your Bible in front of you, I hope that we can then turn in the scriptures to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 and uh, to verse 19. So if you're there in your Bibles, 2 Timothy 2, and we're looking at verse 14 until verse 19. And God's word reads, remind them of these things, solemnly charge them in the presence of God, not to dispute about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as workmen who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. But avoid godlessness and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. Who um, further ungodliness. And their word will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, and they upset the faith of many. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to depart from wickedness. And so I wanted to just challenge you, brothers, even from an outset, as we begin our time this evening, as we look at the next five sessions, the plan is to go five weeks and then to have two weeks off. And then from there, have another five sessions before the end of the year. But I wanted to encourage you, brothers, towards a commitment to this class to really take this seriously, to lay aside this time, to be a people that will be diligent in this. And the aim of this is to be a people and to be men that are workmen who don't need to be ashamed, who accurately handle the word of truth. And that's part of the goal of this time together is to be able to say that, to be a people that are not devoting ourselves to an empty chatter, but to be a people that are good workmen with regard to God's word. So I wanted to challenge you brothers towards a ardent commitment to this class. We are thinking through ways in which that can be further, further done. And we'll talk about that as we go as well, when it comes to giving some kind of a lay preacher certificate by the end of let's say 30, 30 classes or so, but we'll work through some of that as we go. The course description, and this is some of what you would have even received probably from Pastor Cal or from myself, is that God has made his intentions clear for those who he calls to the ministry of preaching in particular. And I know that not all of you brothers are going to be necessarily preachers, but some of you will be wanting to know how to rightly use God's word, how to rightly teach God's word towards others in, uh, in your own personal life, those that are part of your family, the, your wife, your children, the aim really is to be a people that are able to preach the word that we find in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. We want to be a people that preach the word. And this charge is, is the, the biblical charge of preaching. Listen to what God's word says there. And if you want to turn with me there, it's not far from where we were earlier in 2 Timothy 2. So 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 5. Listen to the charge. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. That's what you are called to in your preaching. That's what you're called to. You're called towards this charge, preach the word. Now, what does this entail? He then continues. He says, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. How do you preach like this? Well, with great patience and teaching, he continues. And what should, you, what should motivate you in this? That the difference between them and you. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away with ears from their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. But you be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 
you're wondering what version I've been reading from there, it's the Legacy Standard Bible, um, in case you were wondering. But this course that we're going to be looking at in the next while is developed to help you, the student, to understand the desire that the Lord has and his plan for preaching so that you might pattern a lifestyle after biblical preaching. A preaching ministry, if you call towards that, if you're a lay preacher or if you're going to be in full-time ministry, that you would be a preacher that, that models your preaching ministry upon this biblical model. That's the desire that we have. So after introducing ourselves to the concept of biblical exposition, we will then begin to build ourselves up into a study strategy. So that's what I'm hoping to lead you toward even in the first five sessions, a, a study strategy for sermonizing the scriptures. Unfamiliar terminology will defi be defined as we work through this, and, an, and a philosophy of approach will be laid down. The foundation rules and principles of homiletics will be taught, along with a host of other related matters, and we're going to look at these things as we go. Everything learned will be to practice, will be put into practice within this class time. We're hoping to give some class assignments and even some out-of-class assignments. We'll look at some reading material. We've got um, Power in the Pulpit as the, the assigned textbook, and I know that Cal's got some of that or even on PDF version. So we'll be sending that along. And that's what's helpful about even having the WhatsApp group. So thank you, brothers, for joining that. And so we'll hopefully uh, pass out some of the assignments like that. Cal and I were talking about ways in which we could even look at doing some 20 minute sermons, maybe even through something like the Zoom platform, where we even assess one another and work through some of these things. And we could record it, send it to each other. You could watch it in double speed if you wish, if you don't have much time. So we'll work out some of these things as we go and you can be praying for us. And that's really much of my prayer for, for you, brothers. I've been praying that the Lord would revive the church in South Africa. And one of the ways that he does that is through preaching. You can go and study revivals. You could probably even get a, a book. Um, I know Augustine's got a book on, on revivals. And as you look at that, the commonality between all revivals of history has been the preaching of God's word. And so as we are equipped to preach, so it is that the Lord begins to revive his church, even in our country. So the question of why we should preach the Bible will be also addressed in some details in this early stages of this expository preaching journey. The Bible will obviously be our main textbook and our exercise tool. A comprehensive handbook on the subject of preaching is recommended. The textbook is as follows, and you can write this down if you wish, and you can see if you can get it. Uh, you'll probably be able to get it on Logos. I know that you're also able to get it on Kindle. I believe Kindle was somewhere around 300 Rand. You can get a hard copy of this for about 500 Rand. And I think they've only got one left. So I've asked them to put it aside at Augustine. Um, but that's here on this side. And so if, if whoever, I guess, messages me first out of the group can probably get that one. I've got a copy that I could lend to one of the brothers here as well, but we'll also get the PDF version out to you. So that's um, Power in the Pulpit by Jerry Vines and Jim Shaddix. That's Power in the Pulpit, and it was published 1999 by Moody Press, Chicago. If you're looking for the IBSN number, it's 08024774042. So you heard that, I'm sure. So let's look at the outline then of the course and the content that we're going to be looking at. The course is designed to introduce you the student to the task of expository preaching by the way of the following aspects. Expository preaching is the grand scheme of theological study. So that is a presupposition that I'm putting before you even today. The grand scheme of all of theological study actually is expository preaching. It's what builds you towards that. And it's something that everything else feeds into this. We're going to look at some of the definitions because we do need to be clear about definitions when we think through preaching, as we think of the, the process of exposition. We're going to also look at a study strategy for preaching the Bible. We're also going to look at a spectrum of homiletical principles used in preparation and delivery of biblical sermons. And then we're going to answer the important question of why preach the Bible. And that's going to be what we're going to be looking at inside of these five sessions, but also coming forward probably into the next five before the end of the year. Just to remind you of that, we'll have five sessions and then we'll have a two week break and then we'll have a five session once again. What are the objectives? And this is some of the objectives that 
that I believe are the biblical objectives for a course like this. Well, the first objective is to show and orientate the lay preacher or the person that's wanting to, that's listening to this, you brothers that are all logged in, or future full-time preachers, to, to show the flow of study as well as the subjects that are entailed in the work of Bible exposition. What I'm hoping to do is to even inculcate in you, the listener, a love of learning and a love of God's word and a love to study God's word. And as that happens, it almost will come naturally to you. You won't really need too much of my help with regard to that because you'll start to want to do that. We can always help you towards what books to buy, but um, we pray in that the Holy Spirit and by God's kindness that he would work with within your own heart towards loving this subject. And then it's to also introduce the student to the to the nature and, and to really nurture him in the task of expository preaching of God's word. It's also to lay an initial foundation for further classes or further personal study that will tackle the same important subject and take it even to the next level. So we're thinking through some of the hermeneutics ideas of next year. We've got some other great material that I've got from Joel James. I'm not using that material um, now. Um, I've been working a bit on some of this of recent. But some of this, and I, I would say to some of the brothers that are joining from Benoni Bible Church that have been part of our preaching class on a Wednesday night, you brothers are going to need to be extra patient because you're going to hear some of the same stuff you've heard before. But thank you for coming and joining in anyway. So this will be introductory, but foundational for your future development, even as you seek to serve the Lord in the marvelous task of preaching. But it also helps you if you a lay a layman to be able to understand what biblical preaching looks like so that you can also hold your elders accountable and so that you can know what biblical preaching really is. It's also to give the student a basic working knowledge of the various steps and the procedures that are included in the whole process of Bible exposition. Another purpose is to stir up and stimulate in each student the gift of intuitive understanding when it comes to analyzing a passage of scripture and synthesizing it into a sermon. So I'll repeat that because it's it's an important point. I do think that there is a level where by the Spirit of God, if you are called towards preaching, where there's a gift that the Holy Spirit even works within you, and there's an intuition that's there, but we can help that. We can help stimulate that in each student, and, and we pray that God would really use that and help bless that individual to be a blessing to the local churches that they are part of, and we want to see them to being able to look at a passage of scripture to be able to th synthesize it into a sermon as they analyze even that passage. We also want to establish an orderly system of principles that will help the student by the Holy Spirit's power to achieve the above objectives and become a more effective preacher of God's word. And then another objective is to provide the student with sufficient reason for wholeheartedly committing themselves to a lifelong labor of expository preaching at his best option. And I wanted to put that out as well in the beginning, that even with, with me leading this class, I'm very grateful for you brothers that being part of this because the one that teaches often learns the most. And this is a subject that I love and am also growing in. I have been preaching for now just over, yeah, well, just over 12 years. This coming May will be 13 years. I tried to calculate it the other day, but it kind of, um, there were other more important things to do, but most of my ministry in, in Middleburg, I was preaching two sermons at least a week, if not more. And uh, here in Benoni, we've been preaching on a Sunday morning, but recently we began Sunday evenings as well. So there's been a number of sermons that have been preached, but I don't see myself as a professional at this, but as somebody that's also a student of the, the grand subject of preaching. And so we long to impart some of that to you brothers and also to grow from one another and to as iron sharpens iron be a blessing towards one another what are some of the outcomes that we're looking to achieve in this course going forward and what we are hoping to to see inside of the student and what we really would expect of the student in that sense we we expect an outcome of of you being capable of selecting a suitable portion of scripture to preach so that's our hope we want you to be able to look at the Bible and be able to select a suitable portion and then to be able to be equipped to be able to preach that portion of scripture. We also want to see and we want you to be able to demonstrate an initial working knowledge 
or in the methodology of study or, and of studying the Bible so that you can preach the Bible. So we're hoping to equip you, the student, to be able to study the Bible so that you can preach the Bible. And if you're already studying the Bible, we want to help you study the Bible better. And we want you to be able to preach the Bible better. So that's a, a hope and that's an outcome goal that we have. We have an introductory, we want you to have an introductory understanding of the various principles of homiletics used in sermon preparation and delivery. And we also want to give a compelling reason for the supremacy of preaching the Bible. We believe that this is the way that all preaching ought to be. The, the only preaching that we would see as biblical preaching is the kind of preaching that preaches the Bible. We want to see you preach the Bible. And obviously that means preaching a passage the way that God intended that passage to be preached. We want the meaning that God intended to be the meaning that is given within a, within a sermon. We don't want man's thoughts, etc. So the assessment and evaluations, we are still working a little bit on this, or I'm working a bit on this. The student will be expected to satisfactorily complete the, the following course requirements. And, and this is really a level of accountability, but this is for you brothers, really. You know, you're going to get as much out of this class as you want to get out of it, and you're going to grow as much from it as you want to grow from it. And so I put that out to you as well. It's going to be a, a different task trying to manage, let's say, 31 students in regard to this. It's up to you how much you're going to put into this, how much effort you're going to be putting into this. But on your own, we would expect that you would read and study the minimum required reading materials and we'll probably give you some of that reading material within the break between the first five sessions and the next five sessions we will give you some of the power in the pulpit reading material to go through during that time and then to present the required assignments according to the to what we what we will give on the whatsapp group so there will be times that we give you assignments that are linked to that and uh, we will probably hand out a few different passages and ask you to look at some of the development of that passage or the dominance of that passage, etc. And then to also research selected topics, we might give you some topics that um, that come up. Hal and I are going to be talking and we'll be uh, probably giving one or two topics to the students to have a look at while we go. And that's what's nice about the WhatsApp group, because we'll be able to give you some of that. It's not going to be particularly necessarily a, a, a chat group, but it's going to be something that at least we can put material there. We can give it to you and you can get it quite easily. And we also, and, and brothers, I think that this is a reasonable expectation. I know that I've gotten two apologies from brothers as well that, that have sent in apologies. Um, but but I, I, I do believe that this is reasonable to expect you to attend all class and all lecture times, unless providentially hindered. It, it's going to help you tremendously to be part of this weekly and to be disciplined about it. And that's one of the reasons that Cal and I discussed and decided on this time frame in particular, eight o'clock till nine o'clock on a Sunday night. And, um, and I think that's something that we can lay aside and say, this is something that we're going to prioritize and we want to, to be part of this, unless providentially hindered. In other words, you like sick or you're having to visit a, an alien brother or sister or, you know, like um, if you're going to visit a sister, take your wife with you, etc. It's a reasonable expectation that the student will be will say no to other things or events to commit themselves to this class. And we're doing that. I'm doing that. We're, we're having busy schedules. Like I said to Cal earlier, we had um, firm foundations this morning morning service, care ministry meeting, evening service, and got home for this. And so we're committing to this and we expect that the student would then commit to this as well and, and give of their time towards this. We also don't want you to miss some of the bus. You know, while everybody's on the bus and we've gone through one session, we don't want you to feel lost because these things build on each other. So today's class will build on next week's class, et cetera, and it will go on like that, that if you miss it, it won't, it won't be great. We are thinking through some of some kind of an allocation of marks. I'll just read out to you what I've put out here as far as an allocation of marks, because I think it is important to have some kind of an outcome. That's why I said earlier that we're thinking of doing something like a lay preachers certificate. And that it helps you to have confidence if you're competent and you'll know that, hey, yes, other brothers that have said I'm competent to preach. And that just, you might not never show that certificate to anybody else, you know, but at least you know that there's some brothers that have been able to listen to you preach and that you're competent enough to get into the pulpit. 
and that helps you with um, where you are in your local church. But we're thinking through something like reading assignments being about 20% of the mark, study assessments being about 20% of the mark, class sessions being about 20% of the mark, and a final examination of being um, of about 40% being part of the mark. So we're thinking through some of that, how that will work out, you know, stay posted, we'll get into that. Okay, so we're on 2027. Any questions regarding the introduction there? And then we're going to get into the introduction of expository preaching. I don't know. I see there's church. Okay. If there's any question, I don't know, maybe it must come through on the chat group or something. If there's none, we're going to carry on. Uh, okay, maybe Dean or... Um, Dean or Cal can interrupt me if there has been a question because I'm not looking much at the, the other screen. Okay, let's go into introduction to expository preaching. If you're going to run well the race that is set before you regarding biblical exposition, you will need to be sure that preaching and teaching the Bible is what God wants you to do and what you, by God's grace, are committed to doing for him with your life. Preaching the word ought to be the very key aim of every student inside of this class. If you're going to be doing any preaching, you're going to be wanting to preach the word. Listen to what Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 says. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of Yahweh and to practice it and to teach his statutes and judgments in Israel. Do you see what, what we see even in a little verse like this, Ezra chapter 7 verse 10? What did he do? He set his heart to study the law of Yahweh. And not just to study the law of Yahweh, but to practice it. Now, what does that mean? For the preacher, for the true biblical preacher, if you can picture your sermon being something like a shotgun, the full shotgun blast goes first through the preacher, your heart, your life, you practicing it, you making sure that you're not just somebody who speaks God's word, but you're doing God's word. That's when you're able to really teach his word so that when those pellets from the shotgun hit some of those that are listening to the sermon, that that has gone through you first. You're the one that is studying the law of the Lord and you practicing the law of the Lord. And then once that's happening, that's when you start to actually have a proper confidence in God's word because you love God's word. That's when you're able to teach his statutes and his judgments. And that's what Ezra did with Israel. That ought to be the same with the preacher today in our pulpits. Everything that you plan to do from here as you think through this, and this is a starting point for a class like this, but maybe it's a starting point for some of you that are interested in biblical preaching. Everything from here ought to feed into and shape you into a capable preacher and a teacher of God's word. If you can inculcate into your own life, and if we can help you in inculcating into you a love of learning and of study and a love of God's word, then we would have won a great victory in teaching this class. Future study, whether by institution or whether private or whether provided by us in this kind of a forum, all of that will be something that will be easy for you because you'll want to do that if we can inculcate that love of learning. The aim of this of, of this class and of Bible exposition ought to be the main focus of why you would do other classes. And notice as well with Bible exposition and even with biblical preaching, it is first and foremost God focused. And this is something brothers that you need to get right from the outset. When you preach, you need to be preaching for an audience of one and for the benefit of all that are there. When you do this, you do it for the glory of God alone, and that will keep you from the fear of man, which really is a snare, and it's a snare that many fall into. It's a trap, and it keeps you there, and if you try to do your ministry to please people, you're going to land up not pleasing people. You get what I'm saying there? Because as you focus on pleasing people, you're going to end up displeasing people because as you please some people you're going to displease other people and as you please those people you're going to displease those people the bible preacher needs to be somebody who focuses on pleasing the lord and on focusing on the lord and on the glory of the lord come what may you do that you honor christ 
and you'd stick to his word and the Lord will take care of the rest. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have uh, difficult times or harsh criticism or whatever it may be, but you continue to focus upon the Lord. So you preach for an audience of one. That ought to be foundational. If you're ever to stand in the pulpit, if you are a preacher that does stand in the pulpit, if you're a lay teacher that stands in the pulpit, you ought to be doing what you do for the glory of God, which is not different from how every Christian ought to be living their life. Do what you do for the glory of God and for the benefit of the body. You want to be building up the body of Christ. And that's the heart of the Bible teacher, the Bible preacher. There are four levels and arrows in the following flow chart. And I don't know if Dean's going to be able to pull that up for us while we are talking. But there's four levels and arrows in the following flow chart that, uh, that we're going to look at that will picture how all of the different areas of learning that is necessary for the mature expositor are like great rivers which all end up flowing into one great sea of Bible exposition. So there's this flow chart that we're going to look at. And it really just, I did not exit my thing. There we go. Um, and it starts down at the bottom on level one. And at level one, you've got Bible introduction. So you've got your uh, things like, like introduction to the New Testament, introduction to the Old Testament, your understanding of this. If, if you've got a good study Bible, for example, you could go and you could look at all of the, the introductory notes to all of the different Bible books. And this would be Bible overview, um, you know, overview of the New Testament, overview of the Old Testament, getting to know the key passages, getting to an understanding and a grip on the Bible itself. So Bible introduction. And then you've got biblical languages. So that would be another foundational level right at the bottom level of expository preaching is your biblical languages. And as you study God's word, God has written his word in language. He's written it in Greek and in Hebrew and argumentative. I mean, there's a whole argument about whether Job was written in Aramaic or not. So there's a whole school that says Job was written in Aramaic. So let's give it to them and say that the Bible was written in those three languages. But you should also have a firm grasp on the English language if you are preaching in English. You ought to have a firm grasp on the Afrikaans language if you are preaching in Afrikaans so that you're able to understand the laws that govern language, because laws govern language. And so when we think of biblical languages, we are specifically thinking of Greek and Hebrew, you should have at least a basic knowledge of the biblical languages. And that's just at the bottom level. And God has been very merciful to us in our age, that we're, uh, we're able to receive a lot of this even at the fingertip. And there's often times that you can even get free uh, material. I know that on Logos, you can even have key cards for Hebrew and key cards for Greek, where you can learn the alphabet of Hebrew and Greek, and you can, you can pursue some of the biblical languages, and that's just at the bottom. And then the next level one kind of thing is hermeneutics. And that's when we speak of hermeneutics, we're speaking about the science of interpretation. So that's the third block on the bottom right is, is hermeneutics. Um, German mutics, I mean hermeneutics. So there we got it. So hermeneutics is foundational. Now we're not going to get into hermeneutics in this first five sessions. We're probably not going to necessarily touch on it in the next five sessions, but next year, probably the first 10 classes that we do, we're going to look at some hermeneutical principles that we're going to nail down. But that's right there down at the level one. Building up from that, we've got what we call Bible exegesis. Bible or biblical exegesis. So these three blocks at the bottom feed into biblical exegesis. In other words, we're taking out from God's word what God is saying in his word. You've, you've probably heard the phrase eisegesis. Eisegesis is when you put into God's word what you're thinking. Rather, biblical exegesis is taking out of God's word what is God's thoughts. Then you move on to a level three, that flows out from that biblical exegesis. And from there, you've got on the far left, you've got systematic theology. And so systematic theology is the next obvious flow from level one, level two, and then level three is systematic theology, as well as biblical theology. I don't know if you can, oh, there we go. I can scroll on it as well. That's right. Great. So you've got systematic theology and you've got biblical theology on that left-hand block. And 
And there you've got your theology that's flowing from your Bible exegesis. Now notice as well that your systematic theology and your biblical theology doesn't determine your Bible exegesis. That's an important step for us to recognize. It's our Bible exegesis when we've got the hermeneutics, the Bible languages, the biblical introduction. When we've got that feeding and, and, and showing us biblical exegesis, then we've got our systematic theology and our biblical theology. That gets checked back at our Bible exegesis. And that's an important step. And there's many theological schools that actually mess that up. They'll have something like the systematic theology and the biblical theology be something that is right at the foundational level that determines their exegesis. And then what happens with that is then they have what we call presuppositional, um, a presuppositional exegesis. It won't really be biblical exegesis. What we're, our goal is to actually take out from God's word and let our systematic theology and our biblical theology be, be given light because of our Bible exegesis, not the other way around. Then in the next block, you've got church history. And notice again that our church history in, is in level three. It's not down at level one. There's also great uh, fields of, of guys that are in theology that actually have their church history down at the bottom determining their biblical exegesis. They'll say, okay, well, what did everybody else say about this? That's what we've got to believe. But what if those guys are wrong about what they said? And it's almost like those men are, are, are pushed up onto a pedestal as though they are inspired by what they've said. No, first we've got down at level two, our Bible exegesis, and through our Bible exegesis, we view church history. And we look at the different ages of church history. We know that they face different heretics at different times, and then we have heroes at different times. And many times the heresies actually highlighted some of the church history battles that we see and we read about. The next block is philosophy of religion and even apologetics. And some of you might have done CMI classes in philosophy of religion and apologetics. And again, that's not something that shapes our exegesis, but it's from our exegesis that we have philosophy of religion and apologetics. So that's in the third block on level three, philosophy of religion and apologetics. And then on the last block on the far right, we have homiletics, counseling, Christian education, administration, missions, evangelism, contemporary, contemporary society. So that's a lot of different things that I've, that I've lumped into that last block on the right. Homiletics, counseling, Christian education, administration, missions, evangelism, contemporary society, now, again, notice how all of these things are flowing from the biblical exegesis. So you have all of this coming out of your Bible exegesis and then back up at level four, which is right at the top, that goes from all of these four, you've got the final level, which is Bible exposition. So Bible exposition is your end goal of all of this study in theology. If you look at this pie chart in a sense, I mean, you could probably add other things into here, but what you'll notice is that there's a lot of learning that goes into that final product of the preached sermon, but it's all fed rightly. And as you think through it rightly, you're able to come to the right goal of Bible exposition, which is there up at level four. And you can probably scroll up and you'll see that it goes from those to, to that in the top. We're now going to turn to a couple of working definitions, some working definitions. So if you've got your notepads, you might want to jot down some of these working definitions. And um, there might be others that don't hold to the same definitions as what we're giving to you, but that's okay. They can have their own definition. We're going to give you what we mean by what we say when we talk about these things. The term exposition, and that has gotten quite a bad rap recently with a couple of things. And and I agree to a, a large extent, we don't want to be guilty of being a people that are what we call preacherology or sermonology, where we make the preacher or the sermon God. We don't want to do that ever. But when we talk about the term exposition, it comes from the word expose, which means to lay open or to uncover. So that's what we mean when we're talking about exposition. We're talking about laying open God's word. So don't hear us wrong when we talk about exposition. We're simply saying the preacher who does an exposition 
is somebody who lays open God's word. Exposition could be defined as the task of laying open a Bible text in such a way that its original meaning is brought to bear upon the lives of today's listeners. Clarity, accuracy, and passion are key ingredients in this task. So what do I mean by that? I mean that the task that we have in exposition is to lay open the Bible so that it becomes clear to the listener that this is what God has meant by this. And we keep to the original meaning. That's part of the goal of Bible exposition. We go in and we say, what has God meant in this given passage? What God has said here in his word means what God means it to me. The goal of the preacher is to find what God meant in that passage. What was the author's intent? We need to be able to give God the integrity that God is due by saying, you're the one that authored this, so you're the one who gets to define what this means. And the task of the preacher is to go and see what does God mean here, and it only means what God means. So much so that if you disagree with somebody else, then either you're wrong or they wrong, but God is not wrong because God is always right. And so any text in the scriptures only have one meaning. They may have multiple applications, and we'll touch on that in future classes, but every passage in God's word has got one meaning, and the goal of the preacher is to preach God's meaning. You don't come and preach your meaning. You preach God's meaning, and you open that. You lay it bare before the people of God so that they might be impacted by the God who still speaks because God still speaks by his word. He has inspired the word, but he also illuminates the word by the Holy Spirit. So much so that something like John 10, 27, which says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. God's word is God's very word. The preacher should be able to say, thus says the Lord. And the, 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 those that are sit, seated in the pew ought to be able to hear the word of Christ. Yes, it's through a preacher who's fallible, but it's the infallible word of God. And it's the infallible Christ who speaks to his church and he still is head of his church. He shepherds his sheep. And he does that actively, week by week, by the faithful preaching of God's word. As there's clarity, as there's accuracy, and as there's passion. These are key elements, and you can jot that down in your notes. Clarity, accuracy, and passion. They are key ingredients to the task of preaching. I mean, you can just think for a moment on any one of those three terms. It almost could become a three-point sermon of its own, <laughs> if, if it were a passage. But clarity, accuracy, and passion. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing being clear. It's another thing being accurate. But if you're not passionate about it, nobody's going to want to hear about it. Then you just make a good martyr because you're so dry, you burn well. But clarity, accuracy, and passion, key ingredients to this task. One who fulfills the task of exposition, he has another working definition. If you're fulfilling the task of exposition, you can then be called an expositor. So you're an expositor when you are faithfully fulfilling the task of exposition. I think one of the problems today is there's too many people that call themselves expositors that actually don't faithfully fulfill the task of exposition. They don't really lay bare God's word before the people. They just touch on a passage and then they think that that makes them an expositor. If you're opening God's word and, you, and you're reading God's word, but then you say something else other than what God meant, then you're not an expositor because you've not actually faithfully done the work of exposition. The, expo the expositor prepares and preaches what we call expository sermons. It's a laying bare kind of sermons. It's laying before. It's an exposing and opening up kind of a sermon that says, here's what God says. Now what you're going to do about it. In a sense, any sermon, uh, any passage of scripture that is exposited ought to be explained, it ought to be illustrated, it ought to be applied. Now, that's just a general kind of a rule, and that might not apply to any to every single sermon, but you'd have like 10% that would be given to introduction and conclusion, and you'd have 30% or a bit more given to explanation, 30% or a bit less um, given towards illustration, and 30% or a bit more or less given towards application. And we're going to touch on some of these things as we go more. And we're going to suggest the study strategy. And again, it, we're going to suggest a study strategy, not the study strategy. And you can, once you've got this and you've got a grab of this, 
And may the Lord then bless that as you, you know, seek to put that into practice. An expository sermon may be defined as a sermon that explains and applies God's thought. This is a very important concept. It's a sermon that explains and applies God's thought as it is set forth in a given passage of scripture. And so those are some of the working definitions for tonight. And that was some of what we have looked to, to look at this evening. Next week, we're looking at giving, deciding to preach God's thoughts. I do see that we are on at, on about 10 to or, or, um, or a little bit, we've got a little bit of time. So I could actually probably give you a little bit more than, than what we were going to stop at. I expected to uh, I don't know, maybe I was expecting to speak a little bit slower or something, so maybe I must slow down. But we can start looking at some of uh, class two. So if you've got your notes there, uh, we do have a, a few minutes, unless if somebody's got any question, if a question has come through on the chat, then maybe we could touch on some of that. Maybe um, it will be good to, to see if any brothers have got a question on what we've looked at in the above. If not, I can maybe give us a little bit extra for today. No if questions. Wants to yet, pun, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, if a, a brother wants to maybe unmute and then chat, if they have a question, then we can deal with it. If not, continue a little bit. Okay, not all at once. Thank you. Yeah, I think go ahead, Rocky. Just continue a bit for so another five, seven minutes. But, Great. Uh, okay. We did send out a so, chat now. Uh, before you go, great on. man. We did send out a okay, chat. So, so while you're still online, just sign up, please. Thanks. Okay. Um, we got a question. Perfect. Somebody's put a hand up here. Okay. I wasn't uh, aware that I could scroll mm. on the on the flow oh, chart. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Franco. Uh, yes, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my question was about the, where the, if I could see the rest of the flow chart, and then I discovered that I can scroll on the flow chart. So I answered my question. But sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Okay, there's a hand by Jacques. Okay, you see uh, the, you the, the chat, Rocky? Yes, um, I would like to know what is homiletics? So homiletics would be the, the preaching um, side of, of teaching. So your hermeneutics would be the, the science of, of interpretation. And your homiletics would be more of the art side of the preaching side of, of, um, of preaching. So they kind of play on each other. The one is more the science side. The other one is more the art side of the preaching side. So your homiletics would be the actual preaching kind of moment so you would have something of uh, on this flow chart you've got oopsie i'm like moving it now but um some some of what you have with homiletics is when you're thinking about the composition of your sermon you would have something even as you work through your process of preaching you'd have something called an exegetical outline that exegetical outline will move to something called a homiletical outline when you're thinking about the congregation that you're going to be preaching to. So your exegetical outline will be very much uh, based on what the very words are of that passage, but then it would move towards a, a homiletics. And even in homiletics, you would have things like voice projection. You would have the way that you speak, the way that you would craft your sermon. That would all be part of homiletics. It's the actual preaching part of it. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other questions, but you brothers are welcome to stick up a hand or uh, grab my attention Good by evening. unmuting and chatting. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there, this is Mark Murray from CBC. Um, just a question, will we be touching on the role of the Holy Spirit in homiletics as well? Um, no, in indeed. the I mean, sermon, um, sermon formulation yeah. and then also in the, the presentation of the sermon or the reliance of dependence on the Holy Spirit? 
Yeah, because I'm, this is I'm, not I'm, a purely I'm, make. Yes. Sorry? No, no, perfectly. I, I, I get you. And it, you're right. This is not something that just is something that can be taught. It's something that the Holy Spirit must work within you. Of course, he's the one that has inspired the word of God, but he's also the one that, that illuminates the word of God. And so he is involved in this process from start to finish um, as far as the, the task of preaching the word, but then also of the task of those that are listening to the word being preached. The Holy Spirit is involved in that too, because we could do as well as we can, and we should. I mean, we really should have a passion to do as well as we possibly can in the preaching task, but we could preach until we're blue in the face. If the Spirit of God does not work in the hearts of men, then that will be exactly what it is. We'll just be, in a sense, just a clanging gong in a way. So indeed, the Holy Spirit is actively involved in that preaching moment. But I would say that there is a danger among some to think that Holy Spirit preaching is not prepared. That's not of the, you know, the Holy Spirit is ordered. And it's, you know, there, there's people that will say, okay, but if you're a church that's filled with the Holy Spirit, then you just get up in the pulpit and you say what you want to say. We would say that the Holy Spirit's kind of a preaching is well prepared. It's well thought. It's well worked out. It's a workman that has shown himself approved of God as he studies God's word, as he does like the Bereans do of searching the scriptures, of making a good study of the scriptures and not being ashamed in the way that we present the scriptures and then being orderly in the way in which we communicate because God himself is orderly in the way that he communicates. And we would say that the Holy Spirit's way of preaching is taking God's word and giving God's thoughts to man. And so we definitely need the help of the Holy Spirit, even in our study process. One of the, um, the quotes that comes to mind is that you should, as a preacher, if you are called to preach, you should study so hard as though God does not exist. And so you prepare and you study and you work on that passage as though God doesn't even exist. And then you should pray so hard as though your study and your prep and all of that does not exist. Because it's God who in the end does that. And that's, I think, a good balance between the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man inside of the, the preaching task. Franco, I see your hand. Hi. Um, yeah, something that just occurred to me to ask now is, um, are we going to be touching at some point on the course in um, ways to communicate because when you're preaching um, the word of God, right, it doesn't help if the people you're preaching to aren't hearing what you mean to say, right? Um, it, it, because the communication, you, yes, you need to be preaching correctly, but they also need to be hearing what you are saying or what you would mean to say. So are we going to be touching at all on ways to convert Bible speak, um, you know, that, that, that you learn from courses like this and, and, when delving a lot into um, the Bible and and such, into back into a, a, a form of language that communicates well with the listeners. Yeah, um, I, I think that that part of the study strategy that we're looking to to give in this course will help almost naturally with that. One of the things I think many uh, look, there's going to be a lot that you can build on with this. But one of the areas that this will help with is being orderly inside of your preparation as well as your presentation of, of a given passage. I'm hoping that by the time we come to the fifth session, you would have already received a, a study strategy that you could employ even in your own, um, in your own work. And, and it could look just as simple as point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3 in my sermon that is about this major theme inside of this, this passage. And that could be said very simply, but your, your listening audience will be able to peg these development thoughts and be able to understand these development thoughts are under this dominant thought. And all of us operate that way. We operate by, by having that. And I think many a times a preacher isn't as clear with his thoughts because he hasn't thought through his study strategy. So I think it would almost naturally happen a bit like that. But yes, there is the, the task of being an expositor, but there's there's also the responsibility on the listeners, which is part of the task of the preacher as well, to teach the congregation how to listen to a sermon that is preached. Um, if you want to look up, uh, we, we did a conference, um, um, ministry leadership conference this last year. Cal was part of it here at Benoni Bible Church on our 
a YouTube channel, there's there's a there's one from a pastor called Kurt Skelly, and he did a sermon to us on an evening service on expository listening. That was an excellent sermon that you could pass on even to members in your church so that they can be trained how to listen to a sermon that's busy being preached. I see a hand from Mark. Yes, good evening. Just a little joke or a question. Are we going to answer the question of how long a sermon must be? As long as the preacher preaches. But was I like your that version concept. on that, Mark, the other day? You said people are complaining things are too long, uh, hour and 15 minutes, so just go an hour. What was that? And, and, oh, not um, quite an hour and 15 minutes, but I, <laughs> but that's, that's, a, and, that's a question, uh, especially when you look at your audience, a person must understand what the attention spans are, but you also need to train uh, the believers in the sense that they can't expect 15-minute sermons. Or 20 minute sermons you know that's not doing justice if, to the word of god yeah yeah and if if they fall out of a window and die you just resurrect them if you've been preaching too long good that's some good interaction from you brothers thank you and uh, we're coming on to the last two minutes is, is there any other burning thoughts i see another hand from mark Okay. Apologies, it's still from the last time. No, no, no problem. Okay, if there's any other thought or interaction, I see there's a, um, a smiley face. Great. Yeah, I think we're going to close off in a word of prayer, and then if there's any other further interaction, brothers are welcome to, to interact. We are going to try and be as on time as possible, so I'd ask you, brothers, that we will, we will open up the chat I mean, the, the Zoom link probably at about quarter to um, eight next week, Sunday, and then you could join up and try and be on before we begin at eight o'clock. And then we're going to be done by nine o'clock. And then whoever wants to stay on and chat to each other, you're welcome to do that. And if you want to have further interaction, that's cool. I can, I can hang on the line as well. But uh, let's go to our Lord in a word of prayer. Any, if you're still there, could I ask you to close us off with a word of prayer? If you remember how to unmute. <laughs> yes, my brother. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you've given us your word. And that this word of yours is going to outlast this universe, is going to outlast this earth. So, Lord, we ask that you would please help us to rightfully divide your word so that when we teach we will teach your truth and that it will have the blessing of God the Holy Spirit the originator of the word of God pray now Lord that you would please bless us all with a very good night's nice rest and uh, going to work tomorrow that you will grant us strength and um, vitality and that we will do whatever we do to the best of our ability for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Thank you for your love. Amen. Amen. All right, good night. <laughs> uh, thank you, Heavy. Thank you, Rocky. Yeah. Uh, I think yes, it's great thanks, time. Lovely. Yeah, to thanks, our brothers. Bible study. And uh, well, yeah. thank you, all men. Thank you for joining. Uh, what a blessing to see so many on. And I can see this is an exciting subject. So, yeah, I pray that the Lord will make each and every one of you good preachers of his word. Uh, we certainly need them uh, in this country. So have a wonderful evening. Amen. And uh, as we said, we'll be online. If you haven't joined, the, um, please sign up WhatsApp and join group. on. Yeah. Um, there was a note earlier. Uh, join up the WhatsApp group for this class. There is a link there in the chat. Uh, do that quickly before you leave. And um, yeah, thank you guys for joining and we'll see you yeah, next week. Um, maybe, oh, maybe as well. Another thought is that if brothers have any questions from this class, you're welcome to email me as well at, at pastor at bononibiblechurch.co.za. So if you want to send in a question before next week, then you're welcome to, to do that as well. Or you could send a WhatsApp as well. I'm on the WhatsApp group as well. So you could do that and you could send it to Cal as well. If you have a question for Pastor Cal, 
and we can try and work that in as as we as we work. And I think, uh, Pastor Cal, you've been recording the session, right? Yes. Uh, so what I'll do is I will uh, convert it and put it into a YouTube link, and then I'll send it out on the WhatsApp group. Okay, wonderful. So you'll Thank be you. able to watch it again at your leisure. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Cheers. everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a good Bye. evening, Bye. guys. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good night. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.